Hey friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Heidi with Heidi Sambo Home, and today I'm gonna to be sharing the renovations that we did here in our ranch style home that was built in 1964. It was very much so an outdated home that needed a lot of love and attention, and we took them on room by room. So today I'm gonna to be walking you through our living room, our office, the hallway, and also the kitchen. There are so many fun things I'm gonna be sharing in this about 40 minute long video. I hope you enjoy it. So sit back, get something yummy to snack on, and let's get going. The very first space I'm gonna be showing is our kitchen, and that is because this one was such a huge undertaking. This kitchen, very much so patterned after the Brady Bunch style kitchen from that really great sitcom that we used to all watch a long time ago. It had orange countertops and brown cupboards and it had carpet. <laughs> carpet all the way up to the sink and the oven. Now the original owners of this house, we heard that they slipped once and so they decided to put carpet all the way up to the kitchen. But when we purchased this house and moved in, it was one of the kookiest things I think I had ever seen. But we were grateful for the space and I knew that with some time and some love, I could make it look a lot better. So obviously one of the first things I knew I was going to do was rip out that carpet. It also had a tiny pantry that was over to the left side of the kitchen. And then it had this very interesting built-in cutting board that was in the actual countertop. And it was so hard to fully get it cleaned that we just knew that these countertops needed to be completely ripped up and gutted. The other thing it had was these really tiny tiles and they were so hard to clean and the cabinets were not real wood cabinets, at least the doors weren't, they were pressed wood. And so I knew that this was something else that I also wanted to rip out. Now it had a dishwasher in it and we had a dishwasher installed and we put in a new refrigerator and you can see here at this point we had ripped out the counter and we had replaced the carpet with some linoleum flooring but we still had a lot of plans to rip out this wall and there was just so much to do so this makeover actually took us really more like two months to do because we were just taking our time making sure we did it right so here we are we're ripping down all of the upper cabinets and as soon as we did we found a hole in the wall and it just all kinds of funny little things when you do home improvement projects so here I am I personally ripped out all the tile and I wasn't ready to want to redo all of the drywall we wanted this to be a mini makeover where you know we saved our money and got the best bang for our buck so we decided to patch that spot where the hole was and to leave the lower cabinet so you can see here that we're ripping it out and then we went and we purchased some new countertops and we cut out the sinkhole ourselves this was a tricky undertaking because we didn't have all the necessary tools and we didn't want to have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff so what we did on the corners we drilled holes and then we used our jigsaw to cut out the other parts and we were so proud of ourselves that we actually got it done we were really nervous about cracking that really thin spot so here I am, I'm replacing the part of the drywall where there was that hole that was behind the cabinets because I wanted to just replace the drywall on this one particular spot. Now someday we do plan on completely redoing the cabinets inside this area, but like I said, all of this was done on a budget. We wanted to keep everything under I think it was like $500 what our goal was, but we ended up purchasing an island that you're gonna end up seeing right here is the island and that was what drove our budget up because we wanted to have something to be able to have more counter space to cook at but everything we had done in the room was about four hundred and seventy five dollars i think with the countertops and replacing things and just updating stuff the linoleum flooring so everything was on budget so i wanted to make sure that i also brought in some really cute farmhouse decor details i love ikea because they have so many great deals there that are farmhouse themed items and then these curtains came from Amazon. I'll link them down below. I love these curtains. I have them in my living room and as well as in my office. You'll see them. We also ended up adding a new light fixture. This kitchen space actually had a fan in it and every time you would turn on it would just blow. Just it wasn't a good idea to have a fan in a kitchen space so close to the oven. 
Now what I'm doing here is I wanted to create um, more of a hood range look on my kitchen um, above the oven because we just wanted, like I said, to make it look more modern farmhouse and I just like the way it looked. Thought it was so cute. So I'm just mapping out all of my lines that I knew I needed to cut to create a really cute shiplap hood vent covering. Now we left the existing cabinet above the oven and we're gonna just create this little door that is going to be able to hinge open and down and then I can store stuff inside of it. And so it's, it's not a real full oven vent or hood that you would see over an oven, but it was a good dupe that cost me pennies basically to make. So what I'm doing with my jigsaw is I'm just cutting everything out. Now I will say friends, I definitely do things a little crazy here on my channel. I should have technically probably secured this down better and but at this time we had just moved into this house and we did not want to go out and buy a whole bunch of tools. We wanted to try to make it work with what we had. So you can see here that I'm using just a lot of pressure as I'm cutting these pieces apart. And then I'm gonna end up nailing them and gluing them all together to create that shiplap hood vent look. At this point, you can see that I was like, oh man, it's getting a little trickier. <laughs> so the step two was, is I made sure I sanded down all of those pieces so the edges weren't rough looking and they had a nice smooth look. Now at this point I was wishing that I had you know a nice big saw to cut these a little bit straighter. I'll be totally truthful with all of you a jigsaw is not the best thing to be using when you're trying to get straight lines but like I said we were on a budget at this point and we just wanted to get the look without killing ourselves and our budget. So here are all the pieces that I had cut out for it. And then I'm just going to start gluing everything together. And then I'm going to start, you know, nailing everything that I needed to, to make it look really cute for above our oven. So I'm just going to use a wood glue to put these together. And I will say that I used an MDF board because it's not going to bow or have any issues. I did like using MDF. I thought it was really easy to cut and I just like the way that it looked. So just make sure when you're doing this part, line everything up really nice. Take your time, make sure you measure everything out and then go ahead and make sure you give the glue time to set and dry before you start painting. So at this point, I've let the glue dry and I'm going back in and I'm going to caulk all in between those cracks and crevices where maybe I cut a little too small because like I said, I was using a jigsaw <laughs> and I'm just filling it all in. Now a project like this maybe took me like, I don't know, probably about an hour to do just because I had to let you know things dry and come back and then let things dry again. It really didn't take me long at all to do this. I think the harder part was trying to get it up in the kitchen on, on the actual cabinet because it's not a very light piece to have to hold up above your head while you're trying to put in hinges. So here I am, I'm just giving it three coats of white paint. I really like things to be painted well because it just has a really nice look when you paint things really, really well. So once everything was all painted and dried at that point, I was so excited to be able to bring it in. Now I still needed to paint the inside of the cabinet and funny enough, the cabinet is still not painted on the inside even a year later after doing this project, but that's okay. We have little things that we are always working on in our homes, right? <laughs> so I had my son and my husband both helping me hold it up and for 25 bucks, I ended up making this really cute oven hood vent and it's really functional. It opens and closes and it hides all of that stuff in there. And I love how it turned out. I added a little hook on it to add a little wreath. And again, you can see the imperfections in it when you look close, but friends, it was such a vast improvement and it cost almost nothing to give this look. If you're new to my channel and you are liking the content so far, I would love for you to click the subscribe button and join me here on my Heidi Sambo home channel. Don't forget I also have my Heidi Sambo DIY channel. I post over there weekly as well and I usually do about two to three videos each week. So come on over and say hi there too and click the subscribe button here so you don't miss any other fun 
mini makeovers coming up and a lot more clean with me inspiration. Now I think we always all have long lists like this and the important thing is, is to just don't get overwhelmed when you take on a new home improvement project. So here I am, I knew that I wanted to get a tiled look in the kitchen but I did not want to pay the money for it so I went on to Amazon and I found these really cute stencils and I got to work. <laughs> I stenciled on every single one of these little faux tiles and I just used a stencil brush and I just patted in all the way across this whole section. And people when they come into our home, they always think that I actually tiled that section. It is that look that you have to really look close to see that it's not tile and I think it looks so great considering that the, the stencil was so affordable. So here is the space at this point. It looks so different but we still had the other side of the kitchen. So I did that side that you just saw me reveal on June of last year, 2019. And then we tackled this after summer. We went into that next <laughs> season of fall, knowing that we were gonna take down this wall and build up the wall over there where you can see that ledges. That's where our stairs are. And that wall was not up to code. It was really short. It was below my hip bone. And I was always so worried that kids were going to fall over the edge so I knew I wanted to build that wall up and take down this one between the living room so once we found out that it wasn't a load-bearing wall we were able to rip it out so one day I just went and got my hammer and I started taking everything out and just going for it in fact I didn't even tell my husband I was doing this until I had ripped out one whole side of the wall on the kitchen side and I said, hey, um, surprise, when you come home, the wall's gonna be missing. <laughs> and this is what it looked like when I got out both sides of the drywall and already I could see the huge improvement that it made. Our living room is not a very big space. It's a very small, long living room. And when we took out this wall, it made it feel so much better. But can I testify that drywall is hands down the messiest DIY you will ever do? <laughs> I really learned my lesson with this one because it was everywhere. It was absolutely everywhere. And thankfully I have kids that would be willing to help me <laughs> clean up the mess that I had made. We're all about teamwork in our family and I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that I have boys that can help whenever I come up with these crazy projects to do. So once we had gotten all of that drywall out and down, we had to take out the beams. And when the beams came out, this is what the floor looked like. So before we had that, Jason actually went in with the jigsaw and he cut all of those supporting beams. Of course, I saved all of that wood because I will most likely use it for other projects. Miriam was fascinated by the whole thing while Jason was taking it out and he decided to wear that helmet because he didn't want that beam to fall down on him because every time he took out another one of those supporting beams it just kept shifting and moving and so <laughs> that was interesting. The other thing we had to figure out was just rerouting the electrical that was in that wall and thankfully with help from a family member who knew a lot about electrical work we were able to get it done and made sure it was up to code and right so here it is where the wall is completely gone and what a difference it made the space double in size we love how it feels now having it so open and then we had someone we hired someone to come in to build the wall up for us just because we didn't want to tackle that part ourselves we felt like that was something that <laughs> we could probably use help with and the guy that we ended up having come and do it did such a great job he is a local person here and we just were really impressed with his work and the other reason why we didn't want to do it is because the other side of that wall is where the stairs were and trying to drywall and mud and tape that other side was not going to be a safe thing for us to do at least we felt so now at this point I am going to paint the inside of the drawers I ended up painting the fronts of the cupboards in June and then I'm coming back at this point in I think it's September 
September was when we went in and we started finishing up all these little projects on this other side that we were just beat. We needed a break. This is why I'm saying when you do these kind of projects, don't rush. Make sure you do it right because otherwise you'll just have regrets. Take your time to do them right. Now on these cabinets, I pulled off all of that laminate press stuff on the front and then I patched them all with wood putty, sanded them and painted them to give it a smooth look. So here you're seeing the wall being done. You're seeing the look of the pantry. This one was the next one that I really wanted to tackle because it was something that was an easy thing to do. So I knew that by just taking everything out, painting these shelves white, that was gonna brighten the space up. And the green, you can see in there that that's the color that the kitchen originally used to be. It was cracking me up. So I also need to touch up around the trim, which is why I'm showing you that. But the cabinets were brown, the countertops were orange, and then the walls were this avocado green. It was the kookiest kitchen. So you can see why we were just so eager to update this space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pop these shelves out. They thankfully are really easy to remove and they weren't screwed in. They are just sitting on little ledges. Miriam's over there having herself some breakfast and talking about her vitamins that <laughs> she wanted me to open for her. And I'm just removing them all and I'm gonna paint the space. Now when I lifted up the cupboard, I found all kinds of just grimy things along those little ledges that it was gross so thankfully with fresh coat of paint everything just looks so much better here i am sweeping out the space i cleaned off all those little ledges before i started painting and now i'm just going to come back in with a small roller and paint i will say painting a small closet is so tricky because i put my hair in the paint multiple times <laughs> While that was over there drying, later on in the day, I decided to paint the wall that we had built up. Miriam is always my painting buddy. She loves to help me with all of my projects. I don't think I ever can paint anything without her requesting a paintbrush, which I love and I support because I want her to have that DIY spirit too. So here she is using a paintbrush that I felt comfortable giving her because <laughs> her and a roller might not be a good idea. So once I had that wall painted, I moved on to this table. I found it on a trash day. Someone was getting rid of it. We sanded down the top. I stained it a really pretty dark gray color. And then I'm using a stencil to add a little texture to the top because I thought that would be really pretty and custom. And then all of these chairs were also found on a trash day and I painted those. Once the pantry was dry and done being painted, I went in and I lined the shelves with that really pretty Buffalo Check Tiffany Blue paper. I love that contact paper. I picked it up at Walmart. And now I'm measuring and creating some shelving in the back so that I can have a kind of like a tiered tray in the back to be able to put my cans on. So I'm just using that leftover wood we had that came out of our wall. Remember how I said I was going to save it and repurpose it? So here I am. I'm repurposing that wood and I'm just drilling some holes and then screwing two of these two by four pieces together. I'm going to have two of them drilled together and then I'm going to have one that's just flat so that way it has that stacked up tiered tray feel so that I can put my cans and be able to see things towards the back of that deep pantry cabinet. So I'm going to just put in the first one that has the two that are stacked up and then I'm gonna put in the single one and you can see that I needed to paint a couple little spots left. So here I am just painting it. Now I love this image, the before, the better, and the best. Like this just felt so good having this little corner done. These little mini makeovers are my favorite to do because it doesn't take a lot to do it. I think total I spent on that cabinet was just for the contact paper. That was it. Everything else I had, I had the white paint on hand and it was just white paint and adding in those, you know, those little shelves that I built with the two by fours. 
I did purchase some baskets, so maybe I purchased the baskets, but overall, doesn't it look so much better? Also, come over and say hi to me on Instagram. I'm always showing reveals and sneak peeks over there as well when I'm working on my projects, and sometimes I just need advice. Sometimes I have polls over there where I'm asking your opinions because I just can't decide on something and I need fresh eyes on a project. So come over, say hi to me, and find me under the name Heidi Sambel. Now I'm gonna hold off on showing you the full reveal of the kitchen because I want to move over to the living room at this point. When we finish that second part of the kitchen, the living room was the next space because the wall was missing and we just had a lot of plans for this space too. We wanted to have better cabinets in here and we wanted to get the carpet out and re-stain the floors and make them look really pretty. So the first thing was, is to figure out what my inspiration was, which was this. The cabinets are gonna be coming from Ikea. We had a nice big rug. And then like I said, those curtains that we used in the kitchen are gonna be brought over into the living room and also the office space, which you'll see a little bit later in the office. But this is the inspiration for the living room. Very farmhouse traditional looking. That is very much so my style. I love farmhouse traditional. I just think it's just so pretty and clean and classic with a little personality. So as we're ripping up this rug, I was dying. Friends, I love rugs in the bedroom, but I think rugs in living spaces <laughs> is a no-go because people just come in from the outside and they just get things just dirty and muddy. So when we brought up the rugs, we found out that this opening into the office space used to be a bedroom. We knew it was a bedroom, but we didn't realize that, I don't know, I just don't know why I didn't think it through, that this wood here would not be continued all the way through. And so there was a lot of patchwork done. There used to be a closet there. So we knew that we could not work on sanding the floors over there. So we just, we focused on sanding only the floors in the living room to get those done. And then we decided later on to carpet the office because the flow through the front door would keep people off of that carpet. I was comfortable with there being carpet in the office. So once the floors were sanded, I went in really quickly to paint everything before we started staining everything because we just wanted to make sure that that was done right and not having sand blowing all over the new paint. And then once I had everything all painted, I headed and I picked up all of the cabinets because we wanted to start building those while we were working on the floors. The floors took us so long to do because there was a lot of humidity in the air. If you're ever planning on doing hardwood floors, keep that in mind. Humidity takes the stain so much longer to dry. It just was so painful. We actually had to wait a really long time to let them dry. So here are the floors and the color was so pretty. I love, 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 love how they're dark wood floors. And at this point, we um, had put on a couple coats of the polyurethane. We still are planning back to do a couple more seals on these floors, but we just, we were beat. We were just so beat. This was so much work at this point. <laughs> and so it was a good stopping point for us before we were getting ready to go into the holiday seasons. It was almost Christmas time and we had family coming, but you can see here that the floors at this point, they looked so pretty and I loved how they looked with the curtains and the rug that we put in. So a couple months later, around springtime, this is how the house is looking as of right now. We still have some projects we wanna do in here. Like I said, we wanna do a couple more coats on that polyurethane on the floor, and we wanna get um, a tile in the kitchen now that we're ready for that part. But here is the table with it being, having that texture on it. I just love it so much. I felt like it gave it so much personality. This painting, I get asked all the time where it's from. It came from Home Goods. I love it. I believe it's by Karen White, and they carry a lot of her work there. This clock is from Walmart. I think I spent, I think it was like 10 bucks, maybe 15 bucks. And then I just love a little little detail here and there for with that farmhouse touch in my home. I think I 
said that earlier that I just love that traditional farmhouse feel. I just think it's so pretty, those little touches of black here and there mixed with the silver. Now one of the things in this space that we have updated is the oven. We didn't put in a new oven at that point just because, like I said, we were sticking to budgets. But the space just looks so pretty now and I love my open shelving. I get asked all the time what I think about open shelves and I absolutely love them. I am a minimalist when it comes to my kitchen appliances. I keep the things that I actually use every single day and I love white dishes. If I could convince you to switch over to white dishes, it's my favorite thing because it just goes with everything. So the living room, what a transformation this was too. You can see over there that the linoleum to the right, that it's starting to peel up some. That's the trick about linoleum is unless you ground it with, you know, carpet and those carpet caps that it can want to pull up. And so that's one of the reasons why it was only a temporary fix. Eventually we're going to rip it all up. And I think we're going to be doing that this summer. But this is the cabinets that we put in. We love them so much. It's so much storage. We also added a big TV. When you saw the reveal at the end of October, just a few minutes back, the TV wasn't there. So we added that in and we love it so much. We also added in this really large um, sectional sofa. We picked this up from Ikea. And then these tall lamps, I picked those up at Target. I love these lamps. I loved them so much that I went back and I got a second one. Originally I bought just one and then I went back and got a second one. So here is the living room. What a transformation it has made. The next space I want to feature in this video is the hallway. Oh, the hallway was one of those spaces that was dark, forgotten about and had absolutely no personality. And it also had blue carpet all the way down. In fact, the bedrooms had blue carpet too. That was the funny thing is that the carpets in the hallway and the bedrooms were blue and the carpet in the front room was tan. It was a new carpet. That's a trick people do with older homes when they're trying to sell older homes. They will um, replace the carpet in the front room. And if you go in further and look into the bedrooms, most likely the carpets in the bedrooms will not be replaced. So this is the plan for the hallway. I was showing the nest a second ago because we had put the nest in our home. We decided to upgrade to that. But once we had our design in mind, you can see here that we did the hallway before we ripped out the wall, but this is just how I'm showing it in this order. And it was because we decided to do the hallway first, we wanted to test out sanding floors and figuring out how to do hardwood floors before we did the front room and tackled them. We didn't want to make a mistake. So here I am working in the hallway. <laughs> Friends, sanding floors, if you have the money to pay someone to do it, I highly recommend you paying someone to do it. This is such a task. If you're a go-getter, go ahead and do your hardwood floors but i will tell you that it is so much work you'll spend a lot of time sanding and sanding and sanding and yes you can rent a big industrial sander but the space was small so we were using a small hand sander i will say that was a regret too but it was so nice being able to have new floors so here you see that i'm moving on to other details i am painting i'm repurposing the lamp that was at the end of the hallway and we're adding in this really cute, I get asked about it all the time, this really cute bath sign. So one of the things we did to update the space was I painted all the doors white and I also updated all the doorknobs and all the doors and that in itself made a huge transformation and then the paint on the walls we're using it all over the living room the kitchen the office and the hallway it's called toasty gray by bear paint i love this color so at this point the stain had dried and you can see the original to what the stain looked like and we went ahead and polyurethaned at the end of the hallway is a linen closet and I love it, but it had a couple funny things about it. There was no moldings around the door, so I decided to just paint the door the same color as the walls. And then that fabric you saw in there, that peachier color, that was when we first moved in, but I decided to put something more neutral, so I just took some foam core boards, cut them down to size, 
line them with the fabric and just pop them into the space. And then I came back in with a lot of white baskets and I love fresh white towels. I cannot say that enough on my channel. I love white towels. So one of the things I wanted to do to give this hallway personality was to add some pictures. So I picked up all of these frames from the Dollar Tree. I thought it was a great price. I will say if you drop them, they do break really easy. So what I'm doing to make sure that they don't fall down from kids walking down the hallway, I get asked this all the time how I keep my pictures up on the wall. I use just tiny pieces of foam tape and I just stick them straight to the wall so that they don't shift or move at all. And then they're nice and secure. So here is the hallway space revealed. Now I will say, I almost forgot to say, I found this mirror at a thrift store. I sanded it down and painted it white. This is that craftsman style that I said that I love that has that traditional feel. So you can see having that mirror there was a nice big chunky piece to put in the hallway. And it just looks so pretty there because that's the view you see when you open the front doors looking at that mirror. And the pictures on the other side, I just love that little touch of black over there that gives it personality. And then the frame at the end of the hallway, I put that on our linen closet and I loved it with the black light above it and also that black sign above the bathroom door that says bath. Now at this point you have seen all the other living spaces and the office was the last one that we tackled. The before was definitely the forgotten room where it just needed personality and it was right off of the kitchen and the front room. So I was just dying to get my hands on this room. We obviously started by taking everything out of the room. The inspiration for this room was going to be so pretty. I love it so much. Now we obviously want to replace this light and we wanted to get some better storage in here because it was an office space. and. So we decided to head over to Ikea and we scheduled some cabinets to have those picked up. We also had carpet brought in and had that put in. And we decided to do carpet in here, like I said, because we had the issue with the floors. When we took up the carpet that was across the living room and the office, we found that there used to be a closet that was there. And we just decided that at this point, carpet would be the best thing because you can see right there's the front door and no one is gonna be able to come over this way with their shoes. We'll always stop someone because we don't really allow shoes in our house anyways. But once the carpet was in and we had those cabinets scheduled, we went back over and picked them up and <laughs> Miriam got a little ice cream treat. We took this lamp and put it out on the driveway and funny enough someone came and picked it up and took it and gave it a new home and we ended up putting in a new light that was exciting to be able to have that put in because i never used that light in the office because i just it drove me crazy <laughs> i didn't like it so here we are at this point we're building the cabinets and it felt so good to be able to add this extra storage the reveal is just what a difference the space has made just in general this whole living space area friends it took us a year it took us a full year of just dedicated time of one month at a time we took a space and gave it love so here is the office when we did it over it looked so different the piano, I actually painted it. I get asked all the time. The piano used to look like that in the upper left-hand corner. I'll link that video down below if you're interested in knowing how I painted it, but I love it. I stained the top and the bench seat the same as our floors, so it matched and looked really pretty. And it's just so fun to decorate the top of it and add a little personality to that corner. This actually had the perfect space in the office to host this piano because this used to be where the existing door was to come into the room and the closet. So it was really perfectly spaced for a piano to be able to sit there. And I just, I love it. I love having a piano in our home so our kids can play on it and bring music into our home. Plus whenever my dad comes to visit, I love it because he plays the piano too. So there is that corner and then on the other side, I made sure that I added in some cute little touches of that traditional yet farmhouse feel. I love these corner metal brackets and then here are those curtains again. 
Like I said, I put them in the kitchen, the living room, and the office. And I just love that the curtains are all the same throughout all of our living spaces. And then I just love those little touches of that hard metal with the wood. You'll see that all throughout our living spaces. I just think it is so pretty. These botanical prints came from Home Goods. I love how they looked on the wall. I thought it added that traditional feel to it. Just, I just love those little touches. I think one of the best parts about putting carpet in this room is that everybody will come and hang out in there when I'm working in the office. Even if there's not a chair for everyone to sit in, they'll just come in and just kind of lay on the carpet and lay next to me while I'm finishing up things at the end of the day. I love all of our spaces. I feel like what a difference it has made. I love having the extra storage in this room. These cabinets, they were a little bit pricier because you can custom build them and decide how many shelves you want in them, what kind of door fronts you want on them. But I will say that we were considering building in a closet into this room and that was way more expensive than adding in these cabinets and having them on opposite sides of the desk just looked so pretty and polished. This chair and this desk were ordered off of Amazon. I'm going to try to link everything that I've shown in this video in all of the reveals. So if you're interested in something, go down there. And if I don't have it listed, just ask me and I'll respond to you in the comments and let you know where they're from. But this chair is my favorite. It is so comfy. It feels like a hug when you sit in it and it's just the perfect height for me to sit at my desk. I love this chair so much and I loved all the little details on it. So again, I'll link that down below. And then on the inside of the desk drawer, Ikea has these really great um, space dividers over in all of their storage department area. They've got all like their totes and baskets and I love, love this one. So I have all kinds of funny little things in here. I love cleaning my ears. I know that's a weird thing about me, but I love keeping a little box of Q-tips in there. I know, totally weird to talk about Q-tips here on this video, but I have that in my desk because I like to keep the things close by that I love. I have this little filing system here so I can, when I'm done working at the end of the day, I like cleaning off the top of my desk so that I start the next day with a clean top on my desk. I can't stand coming into my office when there's just things all over because it always just overwhelms me for the next day. And then above the computer screen there, you can see that I have this really big pretty frame. That was just a frame that I picked up from a thrift store. I put some foam core and fabric on it and created my own little push pin board. And then the lights are from Ikea. You'll see later on in another video when I do um, our home improvement for all of our bedrooms. I'm going to do a long video for that coming probably this next week. I have those same lights in our master bedroom. So here are the cabinets when they're opened up. There is just so much storage space in them and then each one of them have the two drawers that can be pulled out. I love them, love them, love them. <laughs> we actually, in the one over to the left, we created a power station for our kids for their Chromebooks because our schools provide Chromebooks for our students. And you can see that there's a little basket back there. We drilled a hole in the cabinet to bring the power in through that hole and then it's the power strip is sitting inside the basket so that the Chromebooks can charge into that section and it's a power station for our kids. So that way I can keep these Chromebook cords off of my floors. There was a while there where I would always be tripping over these cords over by the kitchen table because that's where they would charge their Chromebooks and so that was something that I absolutely wanted to do. Here's my space where I keep my Cricut cutting machine. I got it for Christmas and that's why it's still wrapped up in the package at that point. But I'm super excited to have that. And then here's another one of those same things that you saw inside my desk. I love these organizing pieces from Ikea. They are so, so great. And I think they're like 10 bucks. I, they're not very much and they're really big. So here is the cabinet on the left side. So much storage space. I have all of our arts and crafts stuff in here, all of our student supply things that we need in here. Everything that you could possibly imagine is inside of these cabinets now and my kids know exactly where to go when they need things. And it's just such a functional workspace for myself to be able to get things done. So friends, if I could tell you anything, 
make your house a home make all the little things that make your home special and feel like you have purpose and make it feel like a space that you want to be in and when you walk in the door you know that that's your home. I think that's one of the things we see a lot on Pinterest and on Instagram when we look at people's feed and it's so easy to feel you know envious or feel like your space isn't as pretty and it's just because those accounts are taking time to make each little space feel like them, giving them personality, giving them space to thrive in. So on this other side of the cabinet you can see here that I mean even just taking all your markers that are the same type and laying them in little containers just makes it feel uniformed and pretty and functional because I have kids I don't want my kids to feel like they can't get into these cabinets too so I just want to testify to all of you love your homes it's worth the time what a difference our home has made by just dedicating 2019 to really loving our space. Like I said, we redid the living room, the kitchen, the office, and the hallway. It feels so good to have loved our home and make it feel great. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. I know it was a long one, but I wanted to inspire you all to love your spaces. And until the next episode, bye friends.